Simulan mong abutin ang iyong pangarap Na magbibigay danga sa iyong bukas Ang suliranin Hindi laging nandyan dapat mong harapin Kami iyong kasama sa bawat takin Magkaakbay nating lulutasin Dito sa Gagabay sa iyong pagkamulat Naway umukit ito sa iyong isipan Maging mapanuri Sundin ang wasto at nararapat Kagandahang nasal ang ipakita Ipadama ang pusong may malasakit Dito sa Fernandino Ating harapin ng walang takot Sasamahan ka ni Fernan At dino ang bagong barkada mo Fernandino Tint TV Have you had a chance to encounter these lines? How about this? These lines were taken from popular poems created by famous writers and you will learn more of this as we go through on our topic today. A blessed day everyone! Welcome to Fernandino Teens TV Season 2! I am Teacher Eloisa Reyes and I will be your language teacher for today. By the way, how are you doing? Why not show us that positive attitude of yours, an amazing smile, by clicking that smiley emoticon on the comment box below. Wow, that's a good start of this fun-filled journey to learning. So, brace yourselves as we explore and understand the many reasons why we have to study poetry. For today's webinar is titled, Discerning the Essence of Written Works of Art, which focuses on identifying the rhyme scheme used in a sonnet, and how we can relate vignettes in real-life situation as well as to differentiate a narrative and dramatic poetry. Meanwhile, the learning objectives for today are as follows. Number one, identify the rhyme scheme of a sonnet. Number two, the qualities of dramatic poetry. 
Number three, identify features and relate personal views of a vignette. These target objectives are aligned from the most essential learning competencies, which are 1. Identify the distinguishing features of notable Anglo-American sonnets, dramatic poetry, vignettes, and short stories. 2. Share personal opinion about sonnets, poems, vignettes, and short stories. Allow me to pause the question as a start of our discussion. Have you not wondering why we need to study and learn about poetry, a sonnet maybe, or a vignette in school? There must have a reason or reasons for that, don't you think? Let us unveil the answers to these questions as we go through the different activities that will surely make your heart feel full with gratitude and love to written works of art. Life is definitely boring for some writers who do not use words that are catchy or appealing to the readers. They love using symbols, connotative words to hide or to let the readers think deeper on the message being conveyed in the written works of art. Let us try an activity that will deepen your understanding on our lesson for today. Join me as I read a stanza taken from a Henry Wadsworth Longfellow's poem entitled Paul Revere and type your answers on the comment section below. Who is the main character in the poem? If your answer is Paul Revere, you are correct. What do you think made the poem interesting to read or to recite? Yes, you are right. It is because of the stanza that tells a situation or a story. Moreover, the rhyming words at the end of every line make the reading more appealing and enjoyable. Number three, kindly type two words in the comment box that have the same or similar ending sound. Awesome! Some of the possible answers, 75, alive, or here, revere. You are doing great, Fernandino teens. In this part, take time to read this simple passage from the novel entitled The House on the Mango Street by Sandra Cisnero. Then after, we will try to answer questions regarding the passage. Okay, let's begin. Number one, from the passage, how will you describe the house the family had purchased? Good thinking, C is the answer. Number two, what feeling is being evoked by the character in the story? Indeed, you are correct if you answered letter B. Very good, you are able to answer the questions correctly. As you may notice, the stanza from a poem and a passage from a story are examples of written works of art and they are part of what we call literary genre. So, as we go through on our lesson, let us discuss some types of literary genres. 1. Dramatic Poetry It is any poetry that uses the discourse of the characters involved to tell a story or portray a situation. Number 2. Sonnet It is derived from the Italian word sonetto, which means a little song or small lyric. In poetry, a sonnet has 14 lines and is written in iambic pentameter. Each line has 10 syllables. Number 3. Vignette It is a short scene that captures a single moment or a defining detail about a character, idea, or other element of the story. Vignettes are mostly descriptive, in fact, they often include little or no plot detail. 
They are not stead alone literary works, nor they complete plots or narratives. 4. Short story. It is an invented prose narrative shorter than a novel usually dealing with few characters and aiming at unity of effect and often concentrating on the creation of mood rather than plot. Number 5. Sonnet a poem of 40 lines using any number of a formal schemes in English literature. It has 10 syllables per line. Sonnets have a specific rhyme scheme. The pattern of rhyme in a poem to identify a rhyme scheme assign a letter of the alphabet to each rhyme sound at the end of a line. If that sound is repeated later on in the poem, that line receives the same letter. There are three main sonnet types. 1. English or Shakespearean sonnet. The rhyme scheme means the ordered pattern of rhymes at the end of each line of a Shakespearean sonnet is A, B, A, B, C, D, C, D, E, F, E, F, G, G. Number 2. Petrarchan sonnet. The rhyme scheme in a Petrarchan sonnet is A B B A A B B A C D C D C D. In a Petrarchan or Italian sonnet, the first eight lines are related. Line nine is called the turn, signifying a change in rhyme pattern and a change in subject matter. Number 3. Variations of Sonnets As long as the sonnet is 14 lines of iambic pentameter, it can have any rhyme scheme. I hope you gain information about the different types of genres. As much as I would like to continue, but let us pause for a little while and have a short break. More of the written works of art when Fernandino Teens TV Season 2 returns. Ang Schools Division Office City of San Fernando, Pampanga ay kaisa ng Department of Education sa pagsasagawa ng mga proyekto at programa na tumutugon sa mga pangangailangan ng mga mag-aaral. Inilunsad ang Division Call Center for Tutors and Guidance Counselors upang magbigay ng educational at psychological assistance sa mga mag-aaral, magulang at stakeholders ng division. Kaya... Kung may nais kayong itanong tungkol sa pag-aaral, maaaring magpadala ng mensahe sa Division Call Center for Tutors and Guidance Counselors Facebook page o tumawag sa mga numero na makikita sa ibaba ng inyong screen tuwing lunes hanggang biyernes sa ganap na alas 8 ng umaga hanggang alas 6 ng gabi. Maaari rin kayong sumangguni sa ating guidance counselors na nagbibigay ng guidance and counseling services. Lahat ng inyong ibabahagi ay mananatiling confidential. Ang nasabing programa ay nagsisilbiling daan upang malaman ang feedbacks ng stakeholders para matulungan ang ating division na mapagbuti pa ang mga sumusunod na programa. Ano pang hinihintay ninyo? Tumawag na sa aming mga numero o bumisita na sa aming Facebook page at magpadala ng inyong mga katanungan. Fernandino Teens TV Welcome back, Fernandino Teens. A while ago, we discussed the concepts concerning to the different literary genres. Let's dig deeper on our lesson for today. Lend me your ears as we discuss more of the features of a sonnet. So again, a sonnet is a poem of 14 lines using any number of a formal schemes and has 10 to 11 syllables per line and there are two types of sonnets. Let's be a team in analyzing the following sonnets. The first one is a Petrarchan sonnet. Let's read it first.
Did you like it? Okay, let us count the syllables on the sonnet. As a review, what is a syllable again? Correct! A syllable is a unit of pronunciation having one vowel sound, with or without surrounding consonants, forming the whole or a part of a word. Example, water, wa, first syllable, ter, second syllable. Got it? I bet you did. Good. Now, let us count the syllables. Did nature find the model when she drew? Let's count. Did nature find the model when she drew? How many did you get? Oh yeah, 10 syllables. So now, you already have an idea on how to count the syllables of a given sonnet. So, I think you can do it now by yourself. So easy, right? Moving on, let's talk about rhyme scheme. As we have mentioned a while ago, Rhyme scheme is defined as the ordered pattern of rhymes at the ends of the lines of a poem or verse. What about the rhyme scheme of the sonnet? Look at the last words in every line. Take note that the first word will be marked as letter A. And if the word on the next line has the same sound with the first word on the first line, Mark it letter A also. But if they are not the same, mark it letter B. Then do it on the same word on the next line. What is the last word on the first line of the sonnet? In what bright realm? What sphere of radiant thought? Correct. Thought is the answer. Let us mark it letter A. Did you mark it as letter A on your paper? Good. Let's move on the next line. What about in line number two? Did nature find the model when she drew? So this time, thought and drew do not have the same sound. Then we will mark it letter B. You are doing good. Let us see line number three. That delicate, dazzling image where we view, through, and view. What do you think? Do they have similar sound? Yes, they do have. And so mark view with letter B as well. Keep going, Fernandino teens. You are doing well. We are now on line number four. Here on this earth, what she in heaven wrought. Wrought is the last word in line number four, and it has the same sound as thought, so we can mark it letter A. And the fifth line goes, What fountain haunting nymphed what dryad sought? I think you got sought and thought and wrought have similar sound, so mark it letter A as well. For line 6 and 7, in groves such golden tresses ever through. Upon the gust, what hearts such virtues knew. The words through and new do have the same sound, but different from sought and view. So this time, let us mark them both letter B. In line number 8, though, her chief virtue with that is fraught. Fraught has the same sound with sought and rot. Then it must be marked with letter A also. From line number 9, 11, and 13, take note of the words. He, brilliantly, and she, since they do have similar words or sounds, mark them with letter C. And on line number 10, 12, and 14, the words ice, denies, and size to have same sounds, 
then mark them with letter D. So the rhyme scheme of this Petrarchan sonnet is A B B A A B B A C D C D C D. What about dramatic poetry? And it goes this way. Dramatic poetry encompasses a highly emotional story that's written in verse and meant to be recited. It usually tells a story or refers to a specific situation. Let us analyze the two written works of Robert Browning and Pedro Calderon de la Barca, and we will find the differences of these two poetry, My Last Duchess. Here is an excerpt from the opening of Robert Browning's My Last Duchess. Notice how he sets the scene, allowing us to envision the painting on the wall. Then, he goes on to tell a story. What have you noticed with this poetic piece? It only narrates or tells a story, and it started on the paintings on the wall. It is about a duke talking about her wife, a duchess, which her painting is on the wall. Anyone who had noticed the painting, they asked the same question on how happy she is that is seen on the flash of happiness into her painted cheek. And here is another example, the dream called life. Following is an excerpt from a dramatic poem entitled the Dream Called Life by Pedro Calderon de la Barca. The scene is immediately set with one word, dream. After that, we enter into a swirl of emotion as the writer tells us a story. This poem entails between free will and fate of a person and how we could be able to attain freedom from a bandage of imprisonment, human situation, or mystery of life. You might wonder about the difference between narrative and dramatic poetry. First, narrative poetry often has a narrator or a single person relaying the take. A second difference lies in the opening of each form of poetry. Narrative poetry tends to set the scene and describe what's happening, whereas dramatic poetry tends to lead with the main character entering the scene and speaking. Number 1. Annabelle Lee by Edgar Allan Poe. It was many and many a year ago, in a kingdom by the sea, that a maiden there lived, whom you may know, by the name of Annabelle Lee. And this maiden she lived with no other thought than to love and be loved by me. Did I see narrative? Wow! That's amazing! You got it! Number 2. The Runaway Slave at Pilgrim's Point by Elizabeth Barrett Browning Our wounds are different. Your white men are, after all, not gods indeed, nor able to make Christ again. Do good with bleeding. We who bleed. If your answer is dramatic, you nailed it. You are doing a great job, Fernandino teens, but wait, there's more. In literature, a vignette is a short scene that captures a single moment or a defining detail about a character, idea, or another element of the story. Vignettes are mostly descriptive. In fact, they often include little or no plot detail. They are not standalone literary works, nor are they complete plots or narratives. Instead, vignettes are small parts of a larger work and can only exist as pieces of a whole story. Vignettes are important because of their descriptive nature. They can illuminate significant information, create depth of character, or provide insights about past events or circumstances. This helps create a more complete picture of the greater story. All stories rely on vignettes to provide detail. 
Without them, stories would be a little more than flat outlines. Vignettes can appear in different ways. They can be a few sentences in a novel or an important scene in a movie. But most importantly, they must be descriptive. Here are some examples of vignettes in a short story and a novel. Much of the 20th century author Ernest Hemingway's fame and renown can be attributed to his descriptive brilliance. He was a master of creating portraits of both setting and character, as he did in his short story, A Well-Lighted Cafe. It was very late and everyone had left the cafe, except an old man who sat in the shadow, the leaves of the three made against electric light. In the daytime, the street was dusty, but at night, the dew settled the dust, and the old man liked to sit late because he was deaf and now at night it was quiet and he felt the difference. The two waiters inside the cafe knew that the old man was a little drunk, and a while he was a good client. They knew that if he became too drunk, he would live without paying, so they kept watch on him. Reading this opening passage creates a clear image and atmosphere in the reader's mind. We can envision the shadow of the leaves in the light. We can feel the silence of the night. And we can imagine the intoxicated but quiet man sitting alone at the cafe. Hemingway doesn't introduce the dialogue, which makes up the majority of the story, until he has employed a vignette that develops the atmosphere and feelings that he needs for the story's success. So let's try this simple activity on vignette. After reading it, type the letter of your choice on the comment section. The Shell Seekers by Rosamond Filcher He put down his script and gazed about him. Saw the long scrub table a motley variety of chairs, the pine dresser laden with painted pottery plates and jugs and bowls, copper saucer pans, beautifully arranged by size, hung from a bin over the stove, along with bunches of herbs and dried garden flowers. There were a basket chair, a shining white refrigerator, and a deep white china sink beneath the window so that any person impelled to do the washing up could amuse himself at the same time by watching people spit go by the pavement. The floor was flat and scattered with rust meat, and the smell was of garlic and herbs like a French country epicery. He could hardly believe his eyes. Is this your kitchen? How does the author describe the kitchen in the first part of the passage? A. It is unorganized and empty. B. It is messy and odorless. C. It is organized and fully furnished. D. It is beautiful and untidy. If your answer is letter C, wow, good thinking. Number 2. What emotion is being emphasized in the passage? A. Surprised B. Happy C. Disappointed D. Scared Yes, I agree. The answer is letter A. Did you get the idea, Fernandino teens? Good job! After the break, let us fall in love with a sonnet written by Elizabeth Barrett Browning entitled, How Do I Love Thee? Stay tuned. Fernandino Teens TV Season 2 will be right back. Maya po oras kaya kayo, Fernandinos. Ako pala ay Elwin Arlserano ng City Tourism Office ng Ciudad San Fernando. Ngayon ng bulan na ini, pag masusyan tayo ang National Heritage Month, nating temang Victory and Humanity, Upholding Filipino Heritage and Identity. Kambena nini, metong karang aktibidades na ng syudad 
happy ning launching ning Bayong Heritage Passport. Ning Heritage Passport, happy ning metong karing proyekto ning kayataamong syudad ning pamanan muna ng Mayor Edwin D. Santiago. Anong no ka rin makalagelangan ding eganagan ng heritage sites, heritage structures, na akit tamo kin kaya katamong heritage district. Makakayado din kaya ni, ding importansya da ding mapil na tradisyon, kaya ni syudad, kalupa yung pamangawang parol, ang po yung pamangalesa. May ahos siyang heritage passport, uling atin kang dapat gawan, anong no ka rin puntalan mula ding at syuking passport, at saka ka mag-selfie, kay ba't kanta palto making tourism office at mamiyalang sticker ka rin ay ganaganang apuntulan mong lugar. At di mong may ngari ang tutong passport. Balo ni Ngeni, panahon na ini, eh tamo makain bisa lumal, uli na ng COVID-19 pandemic. Kaya naman kimbanwa nga ini, agkatan ko lading bikers tamo, edad 18 hanggang 50, imbis na lumawat kayo po, Di na nyo lang dita ka oras di kaya katamang heritage structures kaya ni Syudad. Anya naman ka rin mumunang 50 bikers ang makayari kaya katamang heritage passport, may di na lang premium only San Fernando loot bag. Inggawan nyo mo ba kanta makapag-register, munta kayo mismo opisina na ng City Tourism, yung munisipyo, at saka kayo magdalang metong valid ID. Kabila ng kaya kayong heritage passport, ating makasipit ang instruction nung nano pa yung dapat gawan. Anya naman ka rin hanggang kapadyakin na nano ko pa. Tara na! Fernandino Teens TV Welcome back, Fernandino Teens. I know you are excited to watch and listen to the work of art of Elizabeth Barrett Browning entitled How Do I Love Thee? and other literary pieces. Are you ready? Here is Ma'am Kimberly Malang, my partner teacher, as she will recite the poem. Thank you, Ma'am Eliza. A while ago, examples of sonnets have been given to you. To understand it more, let us have this activity. Identify the rhyme scheme of the sonnet, How Do I Love Thee? by Elizabeth Barrett Browning. How do I love thee? Let me count the ways. I love thee to the depth and breadth and height. My soul can reach when filling out of sight for the ends of being an ideal grace. I love thee to the level of every day's most quiet need by sun and candlelight. I love thee freely as men strive for right. I love thee purely as they turn from praise. I love thee with the passion put to use in my old grips and with my childhood's faith. I love thee with a love I seem to lose. With my lost saints, I love thee with a breath, smiles, tears of all my life. And if God choose, I shall but love thee better after death. You see the words at the end of each line. Let us write A for ways since this is the first word. Next is height. What should it be? Comment down your answers. You're right. It is B. How about sight? Perfect. It is B. It rhymes with the previous word height. How about this one? Grace. Yes, it's A. What is the fifth word? Yes, it's days. Type your answers. It is A. Next word, light. The answer is B. How about right? 
The answer is B. Let us move on to praise. What is your answer? Very good! It is A. Wait, Fernandina Tins. Can you mention the rhyme scheme that we had for the first eight lines? Repeat after me. A, B, B, A, A, B, B, A. Now, let us continue for the next few lines. The last word in the ninth line is use. What is the answer? Very good! It's C. For the tenth line, we have faith. Type your answer below. The answer is D. For the eleventh line, we have loose. What is the correct answer? The answer is C. The next word, breath. The answer is D. We are now in the 13th line. We have the word choose. Type your answers. For the 14th line, death. What is the correct answer? Perfect! The answer is D. Could you repeat the rhyme scheme for the last six lines? We have C, D, C, D, C, D. All in all, for the entire sonnet, we have a rhyme scheme A, B, B, A, A, B, B, A, C, D, C, D, C, and D. Now, based on this rhyme scheme that we got, what type of sonnet it is categorized? Is it Petrarchan or Shakespearean sonnet? Yes, this one is an example of a Petrarchan sonnet. Job well done, Fernandina Tins! You really understood sonnets. Please don't get confused with the other literary genre, dramatic poetry. Let us have additional inputs regarding this to make it clearer to you. It has been learned that dramatic poetry encompasses a highly emotional story that's written in verse and meant to be recited. Let us find out more regarding its types. Closed Drama It is a play that is meant to be read rather than performed. These were particularly popular in the early 19th century when melodrama and burlesque dominated the theater and poets attempted to raise dramatic standards by reviving past traditions. Notable among other closed dramas are Robert Browning's Trafford and Pippa Passes. Next is dramatic monologue which means self-conversation presented dramatically. A person who is speaking to himself or someone else speaks to reveal specific intentions of his actions. Example is The Love Song of J. Alfred Brufrock by T.S. Eliot. Let us go then, you and I. When the evening is spread out against the sky, like a patient etherized upon a table, let us go through certain half-deserted streets, the muttering retreats of restless nights in one-night ship hotels, and sawdust restaurants with oyster shells, streets that follow like a tedious argument of insidious intent to lead you to an overwhelming question. Oh, do not ask, what is it? Let us go and make our visit. This was written by T.S. Eliot, a famous and popular modern poet. He has highlighted the thoughts of a modern young man who is madly in love but still hesitates from expressing it. 
The poem highlights his dilemma of hesitation. You observe that a dramatic monologue is a convenient device to present different characters and their inner thoughts through verses. The next type is soliloquy. It is a monologue spoken by a single character in a theatrical play or a drama. The purpose of a soliloquy is for the character to express their inner thoughts and feelings that are not intended to be heard or known by other characters in the play or the audience members. An example for this is Othello by William Shakespeare. I hate the moor, and it is thought abroad that twixt my sheets. He's done my office. I know not if it be true, but I, for mere suspicion in that kind, will do as if for surety. He holds me well. The better shall my purpose work on him. Lago, the character, expresses his innermost thoughts about his hatred for and jealousy of Othello. During this speech, Lago's character is alone on stage and has no awareness of an audience. Did you get all the types discussed? What are they? Great! Close a drama, dramatic monologue, and soliloquy. Now, let us move on to the next one in connection to the literary genre discussed a while ago. To further understand it, take a look at this one. The room was warm and stuffy, but in a comforting way. It had the heavy but pleasing odor of musty books and old upholstery, with an overall air of ash and cedar from the fire that was always burning low the stone hearth, crackling and spitting quietly. There was a patchwork blanket resting over the side of the sunken but cozy couch, its square stuttered by the love and wear of time. A wooden clock ticked reliably on the wall. Have you noticed that the passage uses descriptive words to paint a picture of a single room? The questions like, where is the room? Who is seeing the room? Why are they there? Whose home is it? Are not answered by the passage. This means that its purpose is to add further insight about the room and to help the audience understand the setting. It doesn't tell a complete story on its own. It was discussed a while ago that when we say vignette, it consists of short scenes taken from a large story. It is not bound to a narrative structure, rather focuses on description. Since vignettes are descriptive in nature, they are designed to give more visual context to a character, place, or event. Another example, not a plot, not an apartment in back, not a man's house, not a daddy's, a house all my own with my porch and my pillow, my pretty purple petunias, my books and my stories, my two shoes waiting beside the bed, nobody to shake a stick at, nobody's garbage to pick up after, only a house quiet as snow, a space for myself to go, clean as paper before the poem. From the house on Mango Street 108. The narrator doesn't focus on telling you how she will find the house of her own, but by describing what it is and what it is not. Good job, Fernandina Tins! We will have more of this when we return. Stay tuned! Hindi lamang sa larangan ng pangkabuhayan apektado ang maraming pamilyang Pilipino. 
kundi maging salarangan ng pagkatuto ng bawat batang Pilipino. Inilunsad ng siyudad ng San Fernando ang programa Nurturing Environment and System for Thriving or NEST, isang education community pantry na naglalayon para sa isang malawakang pagtulong, pagantabay at paggabay na ang focus ay ang makapagbigay ng tulong at suporta sa ating mga mag-aaral sa pamamagitan ng pagbibigay ng educational needs gaya na lamang ng school supplies, tutorial sessions, study tips, at iba pang pa mga pamamaraan na mas lalong makatutulong sa pag-angat ng ating edukasyon. Dahil hindi hadlang ang pandemya sa magandang kinabukasang naghihintay sa ating mga mag-aaral. Sino-sino nga ba ang mga kalahok sa programang ito? Sa pagtutulungan ng ating school administrators, guro, magulang, at iba pang mga miyembro ng ating komunidad gaya ng barangay officials at sangguniang kabataan ay siguradong magiging mas matagumpay ang programang ito. Paano nga ba ang magiging proseso ng naturang programa? Una, magkakaroon tayo ng isang Facebook group, ang Pampanga High School Nest Education Community Pantry na pangungunahan ng Educational Pantry Coordinator. Ang mga magulang, tagapangalaga at mga guro ay ia-add ng ating Educational Pantry members sa Facebook group na ito. Sa page na ito, maaaring i-post ng mga magulang at tagapangalaga o sino mang miyembro ng Educational Pantry ang kanilang mga kahilingan o requests. Kailangan ding ilagay ang pangalan ng mag-aaral, grade at section para sa mas agarang aksyon. Oo nga pala, hindi lang requests ang pwedeng i-post. Pwede rin mag-post ang mga nais magbigay ng tulong o mga gustong mag-donate. Sabi nga nila, sharing is caring. Pandaan na ang Facebook group na ito ay pribado at posts na may kaugnayan lamang sa page na ito ang maaaprobahan. Mayroon din palang Google Form na ipamamahagi kung saan maaari nating isumite ang ating requests o kahilingan. Paano naman ang mga walang internet access sa bahay? Huwag mangamba dahil merong mga nakalaang drop boxes ang ating paaralan na kung saan maaaring ihulog ng mga magulang at tagapangalaga ang kanilang requests. Sa mga nais namang mag-donate ng school supplies, maaaring ilagay ang mga ito sa tabi ng drop boxes. Maaari ring mag-donate ng mga kagamitan o cash donation kaakibat ang pagsusumite ng deed of donation form. Pangalawa, mahalaga ang ugnayan ng mga guro at ng mga magulang o tagapangalaga sa programang ito. Gamit ang video calls o chats, ay ipahahayag ng mga guro ang adhikain ng programang ito sa mga magulang o tagapangalaga. Maaari ring gawin ang orientation na ito ng face-to-face, -face, kasabay ng schedule ng kuhanan ng mga module. Gaya ng nabanggit, hindi lamang mga bagay ang maaaring i-donate. Pwede ring mag-conduct ng tutorial session, study tips, at iba pang mga kagamitan sa pagkatuto gaya ng mga aklat o kaya ay gadgets. Ikatlo, ang requested needs ng ating mga magulang o tagapangalaga ay ililista ng ating nest focal person. Ang mga coordinator naman ang mag-aayos ng mga ito. Ang advisors ng ating mga mag-aaral, guidance counselor, at iba pang mga guro ay ipaaalam sa ating mga magulang at tagapangalaga ang petsa at oras ng pamimigay ng requested needs na gaganapin sa paaralan. Sabi nga nila, it takes a village to raise a child, kaya naman aktibo at iba yung pakikilahok ang inaasahan sa pagsasanib puwersa ng paaralan at barangay na siyang tutukoy sa pangangailangan ng bawat Fernandinong mag-aaral at kikilos upang matugunan ito sa tulong at suporta rin ng mga miyembro ng komunidad. Isang malawakang komunidad 
Para sa isang produktibong educational community pantry ay tiyak na lilikha ng iba yung pagkilos upang maging mas magaan at madali ang pagkatuto ng bawat kabataang Fernandino. Kaya naman tandaan, magbigay ayon sa kakayahan, kumuha ayon sa pangangailangan. Fernandino Teens TV Welcome back Fernandino Teens Let us wrap up today's learning Can you give me the literary genres discussed? Okay, so we have sonnets, dramatic poetry, and vignettes You should know their main features, right? Let us recall the concepts concerning literary genres. Can you give me one literary genre discussed? A sonnet is a poem of 14 lines using any number of formal schemes that has 10 to 11 syllables per line. The two types that we had were Petrarchan and Shakespearean sonnet. Aside from structure, Rhyme scheme is what we consider to be able to find out the type of sonnet presented. We got to know that a rhyme scheme is the ordered pattern of rhymes at the end of each line of a poem. Let us have this sonnet from Dante Alighieri. Yeah, ladies walking past me piteous eyed. Who is the lady that lies prostrate here? Can this be even she my heart holds dear? Nay, if it be so, speak and nothing hide. Her very aspect seems itself beside, and all her features of such altered cheer, that to my thinking they do not appear. Hers who makes others seem beatified. If thou forget to know our lady thus, whom grief overcomes, we wonder in no wise. For also the same thing befalleth us. Yet, if thou watch the movement of her eyes, of her thou shalt be straightway conscious. O oh, whip no more, thou art in all one with ties. The rhyme scheme is A, B, B, A, A, B, B, A, C, D, C, D, C, and D. Therefore, it is considered as Petrarchan sonnet. On the other hand, Astrophil and Estella won the first 108 sonnets and songs in Philip Sidney's set creates the opening scene for this love story. Loving in truth and fain in verse by love to show that she Dear she might take some pleasure of my pain. Pleasure might cause her read, reading might make her know. Knowledge might pity win and pity grace obtain. I sought fit words to paint the blackest face of woe. Studying inventions find her wits to entertain. Oft turning others' lips to see if thence would flow. Some fresh and fruitful showers upon my sunburned brain. But words came halting forth, wanting invention's stay. Invention, nature's child, fled, state dame, studies blows, and others fit still seem, but strangers in my way. Thus great with child to speak and helpless in my throes, biting my truant pen, Bidding myself for spite, Fool, said my muse to me, Look in thy heart and write. The rhyme scheme is A, B, A, B, C, D, C, D, E, F, E, F, G, and G. The sonnet is a Shakespearean sonnet. 
Next literary genre is a highly emotional story that's written in verse and meant to be recited. What is it again, Fernandina teens? Perfect! It's a dramatic poetry. The types presented were closed set drama, dramatic monologue, and soliloquy. How about the third one? They are descriptive and have just a short since taken from a large story. Very good! This one is a vignette. You are a good listener. Try to participate on this activity to know if you really understand the topics discussed. Are you ready, Fernandina Tins? Let's get started. Write true if the statement is correct. Otherwise, write false if it is incorrect. Vignettes are standalone literary works and have complete plot and narratives. Type your answers on the comment box. Great! The answer is false. Vignettes are not standalone written works. They are just short scenes from a larger plot or narrative. A sonnet has 40 lines and each line has 10 syllables. What is your answer? Perfect! The answer is true. A dramatic monologue is the same with soliloquy, but the actor is talking to someone else in the play, not just himself. Is it true or false? Very good! The answer is true. The use of sensory images is one feature of a vignette. Tactile imagery deals more with full body sensations or movement. Nice one! It is false because tactile should be replaced with kinesthetic. Dramatic poetry is also known as dramatic monologue. It is meant to be spoken or acted. Yes, it's true. A rhyme scheme is the ordered pattern of rhymes at the start of each line of a poem. What is your answer? Very good! It is false. Rhyme scheme is at the end of each line. The purpose of a soliloquy is for the character to express his inner thoughts and feelings that are not intended to be heard or known by other characters in the play or the audience members. What is your answer? Perfect! This one is true. It is time to give some words of advice to our Fernandinos. Anything you want to share, Mameloisa? Thank you, Ma'am Kimberly. I hope you learned something new today, Fernandino teens. And remember, its written work of art is a jam. Reading a literary work is one of the means to preserve culture. It is defined as the way of life. It shows the truth of life. Someone who loves literature also learns the values, norms, and teachings of noble mind and character. There are many literary works seen everywhere. But sad to say, reading is one of those everyday activities that we take for granted. How about you, Ma'am Kimberly? Would you like to say something with regard to literature? Yes, Ma'am Eliza. As per Isaac Bashevis Singer, Literature is the memory of humanity. Good literature helps us understand good human relations. You get to see a new perspective of the world. With this, you can be more understanding and empathetic of those around you which everyone needs nowadays in the time of pandemic. I encourage you to read and expose yourselves to any literary work. Read a few pages every day. It can also lighten up your mood and can be a form of escape. In a practical sense, it can keep a pandemic stress away. 
By making the small changes, we can begin to appreciate the beauty of literature. Again, I am Teacher Eloisa. And I am Teacher Kimberly. Thanks for watching, Fernandina Teens. We hope to see you next time, only here in Fernandino Teens TV Season 2. Bye! Bye. Pan 